Welcome to TradeSpoon. My name is Lothar Appel. I'm CEO and founder of TradeSpoon. And today we're going to have a live trading room open to trade stock and options using TradeSpoon technology. For those of you who are new, uh, welcome. Uh, this is a brief bio. I encourage you to read it. Uh, disclosures are very important. If you're new to trading options or you're new to TradeSpoon, I encourage you to read optionsclearing.com for risks associated with um, trading uh, options. And you can always pause the screen to read the rest of the disclosures. All right, let me see if anyone is new. Let Bob attend and anyone new. Okay, so let's go over the positions and see if we want to make any adjustments. Um, we met last time, yeah, yesterday. after the close okay so so it looks like technology right this was overhead resistance we were talking about 296 this is the july high june 27th high this is the second gap first sorry first gap after the fomc decision and the cpi data back in june when the sell-off accelerated and we are trading above that level right right above 296 which is positive, right? Which is the win for the bulls, uh, two days in a row. Uh, we'll see where we're gonna close, two o'clock. So short term, short term, uh, this is overhead resistance. Well, uh, sorry, support, this is support. What used to be overhead resistance is now clearly a support. It's a short term support. It's relatively weak support because it's only day one, day two, right? Usually we want two to three days to confirm the trade. Plus, we have ECB decision tomorrow. They already said that there's a high probability. They, they said they're going to raise it by 25 basis points. In Europe now, it could be 50 basis points, or it could be 75 basis points. So, and that can obviously uh, push the dollar and, uh, uh, and the interest rates, right? And then you know, market is driven by interest rates. You know, earnings are great, but you know, when the market is down, all the stocks are down. So I think that's ECB decision tomorrow and then FOMC decision next week. So this is a clearly support. Ideally, going into the next week, we want to see something like this. Maybe as a, I assume tomorrow is going to be volatile, right? Especially if it's 50 or 75 basis points, it will be extremely volatile. So in ideal world, it, it goes back, this level holds, and then we continue on. Uh, next level is what we talked about is the reactionary February law, right? Technology is clearly outperforming the value. I think that pattern will continue, right? With, you know, my biggest position was in technology. So that, that trade is still on, right? Uh, because, you know, because technology oversold more, right? Value is down maybe 20%, technology is down 35%. So I think right now, more of a rotation into technology. Uh, so that's, you know, obviously scenario number one, right? If they raise, let's say, I don't know, even 50 or 75 basis points, you know, potentially, you know, a break in the revisit of 280, right? Uh, I think it's, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's, I don't think it's a flip of a coin. I think maybe I would say 60% this is going to happen. You know, 40% this is going to happen or something along those lines. 35, 65. I mean, I just don't know, right? I just don't know what the... Um, and the problem is that Europe is behind the, the ball, right? So if they don't raise by 25 basis points, it's a problem. If they do raise by 50 basis, I mean, it's a problem either way. It could be argued that, you know, most of that decision is already factored in and the market is going to... So I think more likely scenario we do this, but, you know, obviously this is on the table. This is why I think the right strategy is to buy and pull backs, right? If it pulls back to this 295, 296, and you see this level holds, okay, you add. But adding a 303 only to see in the morning that we're 290, I'm not sure if it makes sense. So at this point, path of least resistance to the upside. Uh, again, we were talking about measured move. I think uh, all the previous movements were about 10%. We are right at the 10% mark. Right, we're right, right at the 
it could end, right? If ECB is worse than expected and FOMC is worse than expected, then it will be the same as May, right? May was 10%, right? The bottom to top and it was kind of the same setup, right? Market rally, 10%, consolidation, then worse than expected CPI print, uh, FOMC, you know, Fed raises by, you know, 75 basis points and we're down 15%. Uh, so that scenario is possible. I think it's less likely because now people are kind of get are more used to this inflation scare. So you know it could be the other scenario, like in uh, you know March it could be 12 percent, right? Or in January it was what was it? You know nine percent. So nine, twelve, nine percent. So it's already 10 percent. I mean the air is probably going to get thin once we approach this overhead resistance, right? The February, right? The February is gonna be, yeah, it's gonna be 13%. So best case scenario, I think we get to 409, 420, right? Obviously pendulum can overshoot. If we have both positive reaction to ECB, positive to FMC, then maybe 410, 420. Negative reaction, then, you know, maybe that's the top, right? And we're just going down. Uh, so I think my opinion, Portfolio beta should be less than one, right? If the market is down 10%, you don't want to be down 20%, right? Market is extremely overbought, right? It's already up 10%. It, it had hard time to rally more than 10% since the beginning of the year. You know, obviously the spring, you know, we're talking about the spring, the spring is loaded. So there's more momentum behind the bulls and, you know, it's, uh, shorts are getting squeezed, but still uh, it's all driven by the, interest rate decision, which is kind of, you know, probably hard to predict what the outcome will want to be. Uh, you know, just like in June, I said, you know, we're heading higher. I was wrong, right? It was worse than expected. And then we were headed higher. Here, the different setup here, we have CPI decision, right? CPI print and then a decision. So it's a little different, right? There was a CPI print, I think on June 9th, then we dropped and, and then, so it could be a little bit different, so we'll see. So I think the, the main takeaway, beta should be less than one. You can be bullish, right? You can think, okay, I agree, Vlad. I think you can get to 410. You can say, okay, I disagree. You know, it's going to 360. Both things are fine. There's no wrong or right then, but beta should be less than one if you're bullish or bearish, right? Because if you're bearish and all of a sudden we're at 410, you don't want to be down 10% and vice versa. If you're bullish and we are at 370 or 360, you don't want to be down more than 10%. That's why of those four positions, at this point, probably, you know, my portfolio delta has decreased, right? I, I'm close, you know, I'm closing a lot of long position, getting into a spread, you know, maybe delta, you know, beta half, right? Half, still bullish, but half, right? Significantly, significantly less. Any questions? Ricardo, CPI, CPI print already happened in July. I think the next one is, I don't know, September thing. Well, not September, probably in August. I think the, ECB, the interest rate decision next one is in September, but the CPI print next one is in August. But uh, uh, <clears throat> tomorrow we have uh, ECB decision, it's not shown here, it's going to be an ECB decision, and then next uh, Wednesday, Penn Finance target rate, right, and Powell speaks, right, both of these events cause a lot of volatility. ECB decision will also cause uh, volatility, not as much as Fed, I mean, I think everybody already kind of gave up on Europe and kind of a Assume that they're already in recession. So I don't know if tomorrow is going to spark the same type of magnitude as Fed decision, but it will spark volatility. Dollar will move, right? And, and uh, interest rate. So tomorrow, you know, if you have interest rate sensitive uh, stocks like copper, you know, gold, utilities, you know, they will be on the move tomorrow. Right? Because dollar pulled back, right? Dollar either going back to 110. 109, 110, or it's dropping to 105. And same thing, interest rates. They're either going to retest 270 or they will retest 
you know, potentially 320 or 340, right? Big, big large moves as a result of the <clears throat> ECB decision. Meanwhile, technology is up almost 2%, semiconductors up 2.5%, breaking this downtrend. Technology already broke the downtrend. And it basically opens up the gates to retest February high, right? There's no more overhead resistance all the way to 315 to the next 5%. So assuming no news, market should get to 315 because bulls are in control. But, you know, obviously that equilibrium could be shifted quickly. Uh, um, what else? What's interesting? Interest rates, dollar, not much. Price action, VIX, you know, probably one of the lowest prints since April, right? So VIX is approaching the 20 level, uh, which it hasn't been since April. <clears throat> We talk about semiconductors. semiconductors are strong, you know, arc innovation, Bitcoin. So risk on, you know, junk bonds. So high appetite for risk taking. Um, XOP is up another two and a half percent. That's good. We'll take that. Gold still weak. Gold, gold and silver still weak. Gas. That's a pretty impressive rebound. Yeah, gas. And again, Russia, Ukraine turning on, turning off. Gas line in Europe. Well, they're turning back on, so I'm not sure why it's up, but okay. I guess it's probably temporary. Okay, and oil is back at 100. Okay, any questions? All right, let's review the position. Let's see what happens since, yes, so today, what, what did I do today? So ASML, I was able to close. So I'm out of ASML trade, only did credit put spread. I was concerned about, you know, if it had any good news that it will rally. Uh, and I'm out of the Halliburton, got finally closed. Um, and that FCX partial close, right? 29.22 is the trade I opened yesterday, right? Trading around FCX. Still have a position. You can always look in position step, but uh, you can see my different cost basis. And um, uh, still have a put spread and a call. Put spread and a call. All right, let's review the position, see if this makes any sense to make any adjustments. FCX is earnings tomorrow, right? I don't think. I mean, again, it could be volatile. FCX could be up 10%, it could be down 10%. We do have an earnings. In terms of risk, I have smaller position stock and I'm comfortable holding it, right? Uh, if it's down 10%, I'm not gonna be down more than 2.5%, maybe down 1%. And the 35 calls are, there's not much risk, right? So if it's down, then you know I know I'm risking another 66 cents. You know, if it's up 10% or whatever, then okay then it can recover. So probably no changes to FCX. No changes to FCX. Um, it does have earnings. I do have a put spread. So maybe I can sell a call and see earnings. Do I have FCX? I do have FCX. Fine, so let's just sell. It's hedged, so I can sell, let's see. You can move 10%, 29, 26 put. So I can sell 26 put. I do have hedged 31, so I can sell 30 put, not since I'm actually hedged. And that would be the earnings. Okay. 
right? So the thought process is that uh, I do have, it's a November, so it's a calendar hedge, but if it does have really bad earnings and it drops to 25 or 26, then I'm hedged with 30, 25 put spread, right? This should provide uh, a hedge, 30, 25 put. Um, and if not, then I'm, I'm collecting basically 1% by selling 27 put. So 29, $2, so it's less than 10%. It's within the range that it can move, but I think it's extremely oversold. And um, I mean, we have combination of ECB decisions, so it could drop, but I guess the rationale is that I have a put spread. And you know it makes sense to sell you know sell puts again that debit put spread right so I have a debit put spread which is bearish right this is bearish this is a bearish spread right then I'm protected all the way to 25 basically um, <clears throat> and then I'm selling this Friday 27 but. So that's earnings strategy and my trade on FCX announcing earnings tomorrow. IWM. So we sold it at three. I have an order to close at nine. It's at eight fifty-eight. Okay, so I'll, I'll wait. I did sell the hedge yesterday, um, and I have another contract to open. We'll see if tomorrow it reaches nine dollars. It's getting close. So no changes. IWM accidental. What if that's 6085? It's trading at 63, so it's up 5%. Maybe close accidental, especially tomorrow. It's trying to break out. It's underperforming. I think this is good enough. So I'm gonna I have XOP, so I'm gonna close accidental. All right, so I'm out of accidental. It was a good trade, 5% now. Um, I still have accidental, I mean XOP, right? I still have XOP. Um, I have a hedge and I'm long 145, 150 call spreads. Sorry, yeah, 145, 150 call. So XOP, it's either gonna pull back, right? Or, it, I mean, it might retrace. Well, now it's a little bit different, it's here. It can potentially trace close to 138, depending you know, on ECB decision, but it'll probably move tomorrow on the interest rate decision. But going into the decision looks like oil wants to head higher. We'll see what the CB decision looks like. We talked about the QQQ. So I still think there's more room to the upside, maybe not this week, maybe not next week, but you know, end of July, beginning of August, as earnings season unfolds, I think it can get to 316 level. So I do have, I still have 280 put. It lost half of its value. I'm probably going to keep it. And I have debit put spread, 280, 260, and 240. But now I have two contracts on 240, which slowly losing money. So I'm going to convert this into 
uh, debit spread. So I'll to finance this 240 put. So I'll sell 240 put against this because otherwise it's short for now. I mean, it's uh, just single put and it's losing premium as VIX dropping. So let's see, I'm going to go in, going to December, going to December. Two forty. Let's see. I'll sell two twenty put. Two twenty put. Sorry, two forty. Two twenty put. So this way, I don't have. It's all spreads. Because you know, if uh, market continues to go higher and VIX continues to go lower for the next couple of weeks or even a month. You know, I don't want, I want to, I want to, I want to continue to receive the premium, right? So I sold way out of the money, 220 put, you know, I'm pretty bearish. I don't even think it's going to get to that. 220 is pretty bearish, right? So if it gets to 220, I actually would be pretty happy, um, but, you know, probably not. So. For that reason, I'm, I don't, you know, I'm now it's a debit spread because one of the 280 put I closed, right? So now I close the September 280 and basically sold to 20 in December. That's QQQ. Uh, again, if you're not comfortable trading uh, uh, options to hedge your portfolio, I encourage you to consider out of the four position have SH, right? As um, one of the hedges, uh, and maybe into ECB decision, it, maybe it makes sense to hedge, right? We have 1605, 1587. Oh, I just bought it yesterday, sorry. Okay, I, I just bought, okay. So, you know, consider uh, buying SH if you're concerned that the market can sell off and you, you know, you're not tra comfortable trading options to hedge your portfolio, so robo-investor, uh, profit accelerator. This would be the services you would. This would be the trade. Um, spiders. Let's see how we're doing on spiders. So I sold for last time. Three ninety one. Sold four oh six. Bought three eighty one. Now these are my trades on spiders. 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 Okay, so I sold at 391. I sold at 386. I bought at 381. And I bought at 383. Okay, so maybe trim spiders position. I mean, more if this is the end of the rally, so maybe half of the position. So let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Continue to trim. And then I'll put the rest of the contract to sell it. We'll do it at four seven. So again, dollar cost average, sold it at 391, sold it at 386, sold it at 395. Gonna build these letters every one or two percent. Now selling, you know, the rest selling if it reaches 4790. That's spiders, let's see. XLF, uh, I have a hedge. 
this is December. I think market will drop. You will continue to sell off, you know, by December. So I still have that hedge. Uh, XOP, similar approach. December, I'm bearish. So I have the put spread 131.20, but September, I'm bullish. So kind of a calendar spread, right? Diagonals, where you choose different strikes and different levels based on your opinion what's going to happen you know short mid-term medium term what's going to happen long term what's going to happen short term so that's xop no changes um, and then xlk we got into the hedge again go went back to sold 145 call so 140 call sold 145 call and um now i'm waiting and xlk is up to date Okay, any questions? Why bearish in December? Uh, mainly the model, right? So assuming nothing changes, right? Assuming nothing changes, right? If things, if, if we leave things the way they are, right? In terms of, uh, uh, sorry, in terms of, uh, Inflation, right? Let's assume that inflation is not going to get to 2%, you know, anytime soon, right? Um, or, and assume that the wage uh, inflation uh, is going to be an issue. And let's assume that, uh, which is very hard to resolve, uh, and assume that, you know, rents are still going to be high and uh, oil prices are still going to be uh, hovering near 90 so and the, the war in russia and ukraine stays the same right the path of least resistance from the technical point of view just looking at the current trends right down 10 percent right from 394 for you know this month you know and potentially reaching all the way to 300 level by november so my opinion you know there are two camps right there are two camps either you know you can you can basically say you know what this is the bottom right this is the bottom because it's a soft landing right yes inflation is high but you know the oil gas prices are you know for the past 20 weeks every week it's lower and lower right and uh, you know people are not getting mortgages and the, you know new sales are down even though existing home sales are still but you can build a you can you can build a case scenario where Inflation is going to subside, right? That we've plateaued, and you know maybe in September, October, inflation will drop, and then the Fed will come back, come out, and say, you know what, uh, we don't need to keep raising interest rates. Inflation is under control, and we are going to change our policy: either stop raising interest rates or the reverse. You know, since the economy is slowing down, and Apple and Microsoft announcing, you know, potential, you know, either hiring freezes or letting go some of the people or because you know cryptocurrency you know jobs kind of disappeared overnight uh, you can build a scenario you can build a scenario of soft landing right so if you believe in soft lands and a lot of people still do it's not you know it's not like out of the ordinary right so if you believe we're going to have a soft landing all it means then yes this is the bottom and we're heading higher right Boom, 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 boom. November, December, we are, I don't know, 360, For that to happen, the consensus is the Fed have to change their rhetoric, right? From being overly hawkish to being, you know, dovish. So I reserve to change my opinion, and I think only if I, you know, during the press conference, Fed is going to say something to that effect. You know, we are seeing dramatic, dramatic, shift in inflation i think the consensus you need at least two months you know maybe two months august and september cpi is you know probably not to two percent but i don't know from nine percent it's down to i don't know what the six percent or four percent 
And then Fed basically comes out and say, you know, I think our job is done. We're going to reverse our, our, you know, our um, um, <clears throat> our opinion and you know our actions. So this is a soft landing camp. Scenario one. Research that I found, and you know, it's a 20% probability. It's a very low probability event that we're going to have a soft landing and avoid the recession. Can it happen? Yes, it absolutely can happen. Is that a high probability event? No. And if that's not, if this is not going to happen, then from technical point of view, this is, I mean, without any, you know, a lot of technical analysis knowledge, you know, it's a downtrend and which, you know, just like it, the bull trend remain long, right? You know, downtrend, same, same idea, right? So for that reason, and based on the model, I don't think that this is the bottom, right? I don't think this is the bottom and we will retest this bottom, right? Probably usually September, you know, this time, this time of the year, everybody's gonna go back from vacation, volatility will come back. And the other, uh, the main one is that usually all of these type of recessions are followed by a large spike in volatility. 2020, 2008, right? 2000 or 2015, we had, you know, not a recession, but spike to 52 because, you know, default on the debt. Uh, 2008, right? Lehman collapse. 80, 85 VIX, uh, September 11, right? I'm going through the recessions, right? September 11, you know, 48, not even that much, but 50 print, 50 print on September 11 uh, recession. And um, so, so that's uh, my reason that I'm bearish, right? Uh, and the problem is that people are extremely, uh, right now we have a short squeeze. So it makes sense why market continues to rally. But at some point, bears will step in and they will say, you know what, any negative news, any negative news, you know, China defaulting on its debt, uh, Russia turning off gas to Germany, uh, you, know, you know, Germany is in recession, two quarters of negative GDP. I don't, I don't know what the news are. But some kind of a news that can, you know, will have a spike in volatility because I still think there is a huge disconnect, right? There is a huge disconnect that we are dollars at 20 year high, the sentiment is at 40 year low, inflation is at 40 year high, and you know, market is up 15%, right? And people are still holding a lot of equity holdings. So I think that disconnect has to it has to wash out, right? It has to wash out. Okay, Bob, let me know. And the plus midterm elections. Usually during midterm election, before and after, you know, you're gonna have people gonna pay attention to midterm elections, and that can spark volatility. We have all those problems and market has reverse downtrend, right? Because right now this is technical trading. Market is not moving because market is not moving up because anything has changed from a week ago, right? To before. So, you know, market was oversold. You know, we actually, you know, predicted pretty accurately that it will rally. We predicted it pretty accurately, you know, in May and June, uh, but in all these cases, it, it ended, right? So, Right now it's technical trading. Market never moves in one direction. Uh, the reason it was extremely oversold. We have reached a lot of extreme levels. A lot of people are arguing that this is a capitulation. Dollars is 20 year high. Inflation is 20 year high. Oil is at 20 year high. So you have all these extremes. So a lot of people are under impression that this is the bottom. I'm not in that camp. I don't think this is the bottom. I think uh, biggest reason uh, is the uh, there's still expectations that second half of the year, 10% growth in revenue in S&P 500 stocks. And I don't think that's the case. We see announcement of all these companies. I mean, they are rallying because they are oversold, like Delta Airlines, JP Morgan is up, right? But JP Morgan just announced their revenue is down, I don't know, God knows, 30%, right? 
right? And Morgan Stanley announced their earnings is down. You know, Delta Airline announced earnings are down. So earnings are going to be down. We're not going to have a you know 10% growth, uh, and that's not factored in into the consensus. So, but you know things can change. You know. Uh, you know, and that's a good point. The biggest point, Bob, I agree. All of these news were there yesterday. So nothing has changed. So if nothing has changed from physics point of view, from physics point of view, right, then we're going this way, right? From physics point of view, something, ha it has to hit the wall. It has to hit a wall that, which it cannot break. Right now, nothing has really changed from yesterday. All the information that was available yesterday is available today. Right, no new new news. Right, so this is just a system where a ball, you know, you you if you take a ball from the top, right, and you drop it, right, what happens to the ball? Right, this is Newtonian physics. It's going to go back up. What's going to happen after that? It's going to go down, right, low, and then up, and then down, right. So this is physics, right? There's nothing more. It's physics, whatever. It's Newtonian physics, right? But it's going to go lower, right? This magnitude of them, it's going to post lower highs every time. Every time until it hits the wall that gives it enough energy, right? You have to apply energy that it will propel it higher and it will start making new highs. This energy to me is fat. This is the only thing that can change. As long as fat is hawkish, Right, the path of least resistance is to the downside. And assuming it's going to take at least two months, at least two months of positive CPI data, right, improvement, then we're talking about um, August print and September print, right? So only, and then the September print, they're going to meet somewhere, I don't know when they're going to meet, you know, sometimes by October, right? Before, after. And we know that this is extremely bearish time of the year, September, October. So I know until October there will not that that energy will not be applied. Best case, best case scenario, it's October, right? And then we reach the bottom by October, and then everybody's happy. And we're going higher. If we if that energy is not applied in October, then you know we're we're heading we keep we keep going lower until this energy is applied to the system, right? And this energy can only be fed. It cannot be earnings because earnings are only going to get lower as dollar heading higher and as interest heading higher. Earnings are only margins are only going to start collapsing. So that's my that's my reason. That's my reason, my opinion. I don't have. I mean, there are a lot of people that will tell you otherwise, right? They basically will argue that you know market is forward looking, right? And Fed is going to make this announcement sooner than everybody anticipates. Right. I think it's going to be October. They're going to, you know, Fed is going to come out in August. If they do, okay, then we go back to the board and, you know, this was the bottom. We'll have to adjust. But until then, you cannot assume that this is going to happen, right? You cannot assume market is going to reverse. This is basically hope. People who are saying this, they are hoping that Fed is going to come to the rescue, right? You know, Fed put. You know, and usually I learned you don't want to trade on hope. Right. You don't want to trade on hope. You kind of want to trade on the facts, not on hope. Right. So the only way market will post higher highs, you know, you have to hope that the Fed will come to the rescue. They might, but they might not. Right. So that's kind of the reason. But good question, Bob. Love it. How high would the market have to go before he would change the saving hit the bottom? Uh, I mean, you have to look at the technical. I think there's two events. I mean, I, I want to see a VIX, right? I really want to see a VIX above this level. Until this level up, even if we continue growing higher, I'm probably not going to change my mind, right? I mean, I will have to, you know, scratch my head if, well, I definitely think we can get to you know the february or january low right so this january february low is on the table so this is to me is uh, this is the next resistance right resistance one if you leave the system the way it is we're going to r1 right 
the next level of overhead resistance is probably here at right? 430 right this is the high for the week of april right so this is probably but that's too close right 420 428 i mean to change my opinion we have to get to probably i mean what is this high somewhere in here probably i would say r2 right so this is r1 for you know this is r1 Right, somewhere in here, I don't know, 415 to 425, let's call it. This is, I'm not surprised. I think this is what's going to happen. This is my course scenario, right? I, I'm playing to, this is my course scenario that we get to this level. R2, this is best case scenario. This is where, you know, John and I will eat our keyboard, right? I will eat my keyboard if I see all of a sudden 440, 450, you know. But, you know, only then I would start scratching my head and say, you know what, probably I need to get more bearish, uh, more bullish. But as long as we're below 430, as long as we're below 430, I will not change my opinion. If we are above 430, I would have to seriously doubt my opinion. But again, there will be data, right? There is no way we can get to 430 unless something's going to change. And the only thing that's going to change, CPI is going to significantly decrease, and Fed is going to change their rhetoric. Um, so let me know if that helps. But this is a good discussion. And the higher the market going, the more discussions like with this we have, right? Because last time we had we had one, two, three, four, five weeks of higher highs and higher lows. We haven't had five weeks of higher highs, higher lows this year right so this is the first time where we actually five weeks in a row we're not posting new lows so and you know imagine week six week seven week eight all right we're going to have a lot of discussions right we're going to get back to the whiteboard market is going to be at 420 we're, let's we're going to resume this discussion see uh, you know we'll have more data we'll have ecb decision we have that decision we'll have end of the earnings season there'll be a lot of decision data points and you know you have to be flexible, right? You do have to be flexible, but until we get to 420, I'm probably not gonna even think about that we are in the bull market. I have time. Once we're at 420 and above, then I need to scratch my head and think, you know, how to, you know, why did we get there? How did we get there? And what has changed? And does it make sense to change the opinion? That's why right now, you know, beta less than one beta less than one if you are concerned right fear of missing out right now right now we are all driven by fear of missing out you are i am right i think oh my god it's up 10 percent what if it's up another 20 percent and you know i'm 80 percent in cash I, I you know I, that doesn't look good so to just to satisfy my cravings i propose you take xlk right 24 leap right Let's say you want to invest, I don't know how much, XLK trades at 100, right, or something like that, right? Let's say you want to invest $10,000, I don't know, right? Okay, buy 24 leave one contract, right, uh, at 100, right? Buy 100, oh wait, one contract is 100 shares, uh, $10,000 is... Uh, Right, one contract, right? So 100 shares times 100, and I'm drawing blank. Right, so 100 shares, one contract is 100 shares. Right, 100 times, right? So it's a $100 stock, 100 shares. So I have a brain freeze. So if, if XLK is trading at 100, all right, let's do this. Trading at 137, right? These are your tech stocks, right? Visa, you know, Microsoft. So let's say, you know, you know, Vlad, you could be wrong, right? Okay, no problem. I agree that sometimes I'm wrong, that's fine. 
So that, but then there's still a risk that what if I'm right? So you can, you know, it trades at 137, you buy one contract, 100 shares, right? Multiply by you know, 137.28, uh, you know, you have $13,000. And I would go into leap 24 as far as you can, because I don't think this is gonna, you know, by end of this year, it's not gonna happen. So, but next year, maybe I, that that is totally possible. So you buy leap 24, maybe leap spread, right? You buy a spread or do a calendar spread, but then you know you're limited in your losses, right? One contract will cost you, I don't know how much, $4, right, at the moment. So you invest in $400, right? You're not, you're not risking, Seventeen thousand dollars, you know, ten thousand, thirteen thousand dollars. You're risking four hundred dollars, five hundred dollars. You might not move one to one, but you get the point, right? So, and then, then it will satisfy your fear of missing out. So that's another thing that people do, right? Substitution, right? If you have fear of missing out, or you, or you know, I'm picking on you guys, but you know, or you just, or you think that nobody knows where the bottom, right? A lot of people argue nobody knows where's the bottom, right? I talk to my friends, they're like, nobody knows where the bottom is, you have no idea, nobody knows. And I agree with that. <laughs> nobody knows with 100% certainty. So then it's a risk versus reward. You know, you probably don't want to buy, you know, put all your money into XLK right now. I think that would be a mistake. But buying one contract, spending $13,000 by buying one contract, leave 24 and just wait and see what happens, I think it's totally fine, right? Because you can buy one here, and then you'll buy another one here, right? And if I'm right, you will buy another one at 100. And then if I'm right, you're gonna buy another one at 80, right? And then you spread your cost basis because you're not sure, you don't know where the bottom is. You buy one here, one here, one here, and one here, okay? And then you just keep buying until market reaches some kind of a bottom because every time it's a well-defined investment, right? You're not buying on margin. You know, you're not going to lose more than two and a half percent of your account value, and that that would be the strategy. All right. Thank you, Bob. Chris, <laughs> uh, appreciate the sense of humor. All right, Bob, thank you. Okay, I think we're on the same page. It's 2.49. Meanwhile, the fear of missing out continue to grow. No, I'm just joking. Um, okay, bulls are, this is a big win for the bulls, right? Bulls are celebrating. They have a you know strong rally going into ECB decision, expect volatility. It's the same thing, now going to physics, right? Forget ECB and Fed decision, assuming they will not give us any new information then the path of least resistance is higher lows, right? And higher highs, right? Just like I said, you know, physics on the downside, on the upside, it's the same thing, right? Every time higher lows, higher highs, until it reaches a wall that it cannot break, right? It cannot break this wall. Right now, the energy is provided by, well, one, the market is oversold, another one is earnings, right? So earnings and technical analysis. All right, this is what's what's giving the momentum. We have earnings that are not cataclysmic, right? Country, you know, companies are still making money, uh, and <clears throat> even though everybody's complaining about strong dollar, but earnings are still positive and uh, technical analysis, right? Until it hits the wall, right? And then same thing: is there enough energy behind the Microsoft and Apple or Tesla earnings to break through this wall? Yes, or maybe, maybe not. We'll, we'll just have to wait and see. But in terms of passive least resistance, this is the next wall, right? This is, we'll just open the doors to R1. Right, and the next one will be here. And this will be R2. Right? January low, February low. These are multi months, multi long, you know, very strong resistance, right? Going back to the entrenchments, entrench, what's it called? The right, we have this 
images, right? Uh, I don't scare anybody, so, but I mean, yeah, this is not good. Or something more like this, this, this is more peaceful. Okay, so something like this, right? Uh, the longer the the longer the you know the longer the time it took to build these trenches, right? The more sand, the more concrete, the longer it will hold, right? If you build a trench that's only two days, well, probably easier to destroy this trench. If you build a trench since January or, or February, well, it's going to take a lot more work, you know, to break the through the that resistance. Um, all right, any other questions? John, you're awfully quiet. Is everything okay? Oh, is this John from, um, where is John from? South Carolina? Bob, okay. Uh, okay. Um, consider selling calls against it, right? So, Bob, you know, if you if if you're kind of if you're bullish, obviously, like Bob, and you buying, you know, one to twenty twenty four leap because you think we're gonna head higher. That's fine. The advantage of this this is a stock substitution. Consider selling calls, right? You know, I don't know. Whatever you think the worst case, you know, the best case scenario, let's say 164, you know, sell 164 call that expires in September or October, right? And then just keep selling, you know, premium to recover some of the losses of the leap. But yeah, because I'm, I mean, I'm going to start doing this, but I'm kind of waiting for the VIX to jump. That's when I'm going to start buying leaps. Right now, I think it's a little too early, right? Because the time is against you, right? If if this recession ends, you know, if we reach the bottom end of this year, this is going to be a great trade. If we're going to reach the bottom the end of next year, well, this is going to be a losing trade. So it all depends when we're going to reach the bottom. So I think we will reach the bottom end of this year. That's my opinion, but again, it depends when the Fed is going to change the rhetoric. And, and so it could be end of next year. So that's why you want to consistently sell premium against it, uh, you know, every quarter, you know, or something along those lines. All right. Four. All right. So review your beta, right? Very important to review the beta. SPY is up half a percent, QQQ is up one and a half percent. So you can see momentum is, uh, you know, value stocks are negative, right? You know, market cannot go higher without value stocks, right? VTV is everything but technology. So, you know, if VTV already reached December lows, right? And February lows, right and it's losing momentum then if vtv goes lower eventually you know technology you know spiders will go lower too right so and it's underperforming you can see it's clearly underperforming technology and it's already turning negative so that's the air i would be concerned right we don't have that broad base rally anymore so it, it looks like uh, market is losing its momentum going into the ecb decision and then after ecb decision you know just depends what the dollar is going to do and what the interest rates are going to do. But those are the main observations. Value is underperforming, technologies are performing, and then we're going to have spiking volatility of dollar will move and treasury will move tomorrow. So review the beta and just make sure you understand what the beta, you know, and same thing. If you're bullish like Bob, great. You know, just make sure, you know, not make sure, but I propose not to be down more than 10% if we're going to reach 370 in the next two weeks. And vice versa, if you're bearish as, uh, you know, or cautiously, or I don't know, I'm not bearish, I actually think, who is, but I don't know who, uh, John, right? I'll pick on John. John usually bearish. So again, at 415, you don't want to be down 10% because you have too many short positions, right? It's kind of the same idea. All right, that's all I have for today. Uh, any other questions?
Any other questions? Chris, thank you. Trader FCX uh, question mark. Trader, trader, what is the FCX question mark? What exactly do you mean? So I, I mean, I sold the put. This is the earnings strategy, right? So I sold the put. I did sell earnings tomorrow. So I sold this, and I don't know, it could be 10% up, could be 10% down, right? I mean, market is also, Stock is oversold, but then you have ECB decision. So NFCX is extremely sensitive to interest rates. So I expect a lot of volatility this week and next week. So position size is extremely important. I propose to sell one put, right? 27 put, I'm collecting 1%. Uh, and I'm hedging. Uh, I, the reason I'm doing this because I already have November 30, 25 put because I think copper is going lower by November. So if it does drop below 27, let's say 25, well, at least I'm hedged, right? I don't have, you know, unlimited losses. Well, I do have, you can, it potentially can go to zero, but, you know, it's a low probability that it'll go below 25, right? It has to drop like 20%. So that's my thought process. Still have 35 call in case it rallies. You know, this was a spread. I had a spread. I closed the short call. And I'm hoping that, you know, with interest rate move and, and stock being oversold that it will continue to rally. And it's the same idea that, as I said, if Spider is going to get to 412, then it cannot do it without copper prices going up, right? Or JP Morgan going up. It's just impossible, right? To break through all this resistance, so. FCX, am I bullish or bearish? What the time frame? It depends on the time frame, right? I think I'm bullish short term, like for the next week or two. I think it can get to either, well, it's already got to 30. So it's a little bit overbought. So I am concerned. I am concerned. But if, again, if my market continues to rally, I think for the next couple of weeks, it might get to 34. But then I think it will continue going lower. All right, guys, thank you very much. Have a great day. Trader, trader, please update your profile and re-register. So at least I see the first name. Otherwise, you just appear as a trader, trader. I do like to at least know your first name. Uh, and uh, thank you. I will see you tomorrow morning after the CV decision.